Like, when are you and Emilia gonna have kids? We're not done with Italy yet. I personalata esta, like, did you lose your mind? Would we move in the future? Ciao a tutti! Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Sophie. For those of you who are new, I appreciate you for stopping by and for those of you who are returning subscribers, thank you so much for always being here and being a part of this corner here on the internet. I don't remember the last time I did a Q&A. I think the last Q&A I did was in Italian. Um, so I decided I wanted to do an updated one in English. So I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me anything. I think most of the questions are in English. If I do get any anyone's in Italian, I'll put the subtitles down here below. But I know there are a lot of new faces here, so I just a little quick inter introduction. That way some of these questions may not seem out of left field for some of you. So my name is Sophie, Sophia, Sophie for my nickname. And I am, I was born and raised in the US. I have an Italian mother who was born in the US. But my grandfather is from, born and raised in Italy. And many of you may not know this, but my dad is Mexican, so I am also half Mexican. And then I moved to Rome in 2016 to live in Rome with my hus with my now husband in Italy. And we moved back to the US about like last year, like right before the pandemic hit. So that's just me in a nutshell, in case some of these questions may seem confusing to you. Barolo, is she? I've got Barolo, our cat, in the background playing with a cork, a wine, a wine cork. So if there's any noise in the background, apologies. It's my crazy cat. Who we brought actually with us from Italy. All right, I think this is a great question to segue into this after that introduction. How to know if it's worth to move for love? It's a huge step and we only talk on the phone. Okay, so I toyed back and forth with this idea. I think one of my first videos here on YouTube was actually all of the details on why I moved to Italy, what caused me to finally take the leap. But I think if you're long distance, you, you sorry, he's distracting. If you're already long distance, you have to have a game plan. We'll do distance for the next two, three years, but either you move here, I move there, or we move somewhere together to live and be together because it just isn't feasible to maintain a long distance, especially it will depends on where you are. I think you know in your gut. So if it's a place that, first of all, you've always wanted to live or, or travel or, or spend some time in, why not just bite the bullet and take the leap? Wouldn't, I always kept telling myself, wouldn't it be better to go, realize it wasn't for me and always had a home to come back to rather than not, rather than regretting and wondering my entire life, what if, what if I did move and what would have happened if I did do it? So. I think this is a big, you, you really have to listen to your gut instinct on this. I mean, if you really love the person and you want to see and try to make it work, then I think that it's a, that's a great motivator. And if it's a place that you could see yourself living in or wanting to try to live there, at least for a little bit, you might as well just do it. I always just, you know, we only have this one life and you can always go back home. Okay, so I'm I completely, Miss that this was a two-part question. Then she continues and saying, someone has to move and see if it's going to work or not. We are American and Italian. Okay, so you're like me and Emilio. Um, if you're interested in seeing that video I talk about, it's pretty obnoxious because it's one of my first videos, but I will link it down below for you if you are interested. But in summation, I mean, it's, it's also really hard. You have to see what is going to be easier bureaucratically like Emilio wasn't allowed to live in the US when we met you know he couldn't get a green card he couldn't get a work visa and it just made sense for me to go because I have Italian citizenship okay any tips on how to maintain fluency in a foreign language I think I'm losing my Italian so I think I'm losing my Italian too what really has helped me actually was starting to listen to podcasts in Italian Italian Netflix series YouTube channels youtube videos in italian and i just now got into clubhouse and so i actually follow a lot of rooms or whatever they're called in italian and a lot of people and i've even gotten asked and invited to be the speaker a couple times and i get put on the spot and freaked out but it's a great way to speak in live time 
Um, also, there's great apps, there's great uh, tandem also experiences, and I am actually gonna be doing a um, video on this hopefully soon, but in terms of keeping and maintaining it, I think you just have to either find someone to speak it to. I WhatsApp my uh, Emilio's family in Italy all the time. We do FaceTime. I think also I'm forgetting how to write, so finding someone to that you can text to also in that language. But also be patient with yourself. If you, it's only natural to start losing fluency if you're not practicing it every day or if you're not in the country that speaks it. So give yourself the flexibility to, you know, don't be too hard on yourself. Any good Italian shows, movies you've seen lately. So I actually just recently kind of did a video on all of the Italian series and TV shows that you can probably find most of them on Netflix. So if you're interested in that, I will link it up here. But we recently just saw one on Netflix that just came out in the States called um, L'Ultimo Paradiso with, yet again, Ricardo Scamarcio. And it was okay. I personally, when it ended, I was like, what? But it, it's great, like even if I'm not the like biggest fan of the storyline and the plot, I still like to watch them just to practice and maintain my Italian. Your fave milk with espresso. Don't get mad at me, but I actually have not been drinking that much espresso here. I have been drinking a lot more American coffee, um, like an Americano. We have an espresso espresso machine, but we actually don't really use it that much. I think in the summer I use it more just because it's like a short, quick coffee, but when it's chilly out, especially in the winter, I love just a big mug of coffee and to sip it. But I do have some great milks, plant-based, because I don't drink dairy. Some really great plant-based milk options that actually froth really well if you do have a frother and if you want to put that in with your espresso. One of our favorites is Oatly. It just froths like really, really good. And then I also love the milk, the almond milk as well. Do you want more pets? I don't know if you can see Leo is like right, his little snout is right in the corner. And then Borello's running all the way around. Definitely, but just not in this place. Like I don't think we have the space here for another pet, maybe another cat, but Borello literally is like five cats combined. He is such a handful. <laughs> um, if they all were like Leo, yes, we would love so many more. And if Amelia was here, he would tell you he would want like at least 10 more dogs. So <laughs> we need, the, we, we need the, the land or like the space to get more pets, but we love animals so much and we definitely will get more. What do you miss the most from Italy? So as time continues to go on, and it's been now about a year and a half, more or less since uh, I've been back, the, I mean, the obvious here is family. I miss, I mean, Emilio's family, but they're mine too. Like they're just such a part, they're my second family. I miss my sisters-in-law, I miss my nieces, my nephew. I mean, going from seeing them every single day for like almost four years to being in a different country and only having WhatsApp or FaceTime, it's really difficult. So apart from family, we really miss the food, even though Emilio is the master chef here at, at our home. There are just some things like the water that you use here, the ingredients, even if they're imported, that just don't make it taste the same. So definitely the food and the, the beauty. Um, you know, here we live in Houston, Texas right now, and I personally don't find Houston to be a beautiful city. I will, def I will put it out there. And you have to drive everywhere. It's not a walkable city. I miss being able to walk everywhere. I miss being able to hop on a train and be in a different city, in a different region. And I, I, there's so much that I miss about Italy, but those I would say are definitely the biggest things. If you could be anywhere now, where would it be? I want to say Italy, but uh, realistically, because right now Italy is, I mean, I think most of the countries like in Zona Gialla maybe, so like what would we even be doing in Italy besides being with family? Honestly, it's so cold right now in Houston. Like it's snow, it's, there's a snow warning. But realistically, it's the beaches of Mexico, let's be real. Babies in the near future. So I get asked this a lot, a lot. Like when are you and Amelia gonna have kids? And honestly, and this is nothing against the person who asked this question just because I get asked this all the time. It's such a personal question because you don't know someone, what someone's going through 
what what's going on behind the scenes having kids i feel like is expected of women once they hit 30 and they're already married it's like okay when you're gonna pop out babies like that's not everyone's timeline and that's not everyone's goal and that's not what every oh. and that's not for everyone right I love kids, Emilio loves kids. We definitely wanna have kids in the future. We're making sure all of our ducks are in a row before that happens. And I know a lot of people, everyone says, well, there's never the perfect time or the right time to have kids. Like, why wait? We wanna be responsible about it and be able to give our future kid the life they deserve and the life we wanna give them. And we're not at that place right now. So I, pre I don't get offended by that question, but someone else might or someone else may be trying behind the scenes and not being able to conceive so i just want to throw it out there gen in general just be careful when you ask people on social media on public platforms when they expect to have kids how would you compare women's style in italy versus in the u.s so i actually have done a video with my good friend who lives in rome eva comparing the stereotypes but also the reality of the differences of style i will i will link those either up here or down in the description box if you're interested in checking them out but to summarize it, I would to summarize it, I would say Italian women's style is a lot more minimal and simple, whereas American and, and like neutral. Whereas Americans, I feel like we're very like patterns and bright colors, and we love our athleisure, and it's like not really a thing. Like if you're wearing athleisure or like yoga leggings going to the grocery store in Italy, people will be like, "I perso la testa." Like, did you lose your mind? <laughs> I want to move to Italy as soon as it makes sense to. Would you recommend living in Rome? Well, I need to know a little bit about your situation to answer, I feel like, because are you legally able to live in Italy? Because if so, great, it won't be difficult, but if not, like, it's, a, it's pretty difficult. <laughs> um, and also, right now with the pandemic and how the economy is going and the government situation right now in Italy, it's a mess, and I, highly wouldn't recommend it unless you're financially independent you don't need to rely on a job in italy you already have a job that you can live and work remotely then great yes absolutely rome is a very difficult city to live in i have so many videos about why i say this and my experience in living in rome and if we were to do it again i would live somewhere else probably depending on the situation so i, I really think it depends on your situation if you're looking for to go for opportunity and for more organization, I say that very lightly, I would recommend anywhere really in the north. Just based off of my experience, was it difficult being vegan in Italy? And what's the one thing you missed most from over there? Well, I've already asked, answered the latter question. It actually was not difficult being vegan in Italy just because Italy is so full of fresh produce and <laughs> abundance, honestly. I think it was difficult to find plant-based alternatives, even though they, there were some. They definitely are starting to get better about that for sure. I don't think it was hard. I think the hardest part was explaining to Italians why, especially because food is such a big part of their culture. How badly do you want to move back to Italy? It's hard because we came here like right before the pandemic. And so like we haven't really been able to experience the US to its fullest extent. I know Emilio and I talk about this all the time. I know right now we are where we need to be for now. But would we move in the future? If the right opportunity presents itself, why not? Just have like this strong intuition feeling that we're not done with Italy yet. Like obviously we're not done with Italy because my husband's Italian. We will go there to visit all the time, but I just I don't see myself living in the US for the rest of my life. What is your next travel destination once we're allowed somewhere you've never been? I would love to go to Japan and I would love to go to South Africa, but I don't know how realistic it is when that will be able to become reality. Relationship balance experience advice during quarantine. I don't know if I'm the best one to be giving advice for this to be completely honest because we have definitely had our moments and our days and we're still working on this and i don't really know i guess like my biggest advice is don't lose yourself it's really easy if you're quarantined and you can't do your maybe some of your hobbies are spent outside or 
there on hold for now like don't lose yourself in quarantine and don't lose yourself living at home in quarantine with your significant other being together literally like for 24 7 for however long this has been going on it's not good or healthy for anyone like not even i wouldn't even do that with my best friend so i think we've had to kind of draw some boundaries like okay i'm working from this time to this time you do your thing let me you know focus on my work or my work calls um and then also tag teaming and helping around the house like you know one week someone does laundry and the next week the other person does it that way you're just there's not one person that's constantly feeling like they're picking up every like the other person's slack so i don't know if that's the best advice but that's kind of what has been working for us why do you live in america and speak so well italian so in addition to living there for a few years, I grew up with my grandfather speaking Italian and also I minored in Italian in college. So I feel like I've always had an ear for it, but I didn't really start speaking it fluidly and conversationally until I moved there. Which languages do you speak? So English, 100%, like that's my mother language, my mother tongue, Italian. And then I understand Spanish. And I used to speak it pretty fluently, but I'm rusty and I really need to practice. And a little bit of French, like very, very minimal. I studied French um, and studied abroad there, but I haven't practiced it in a long time. Quanti anni hai? Indovinate? No, scherzo. Um, ho 30 anni. Have you ever felt stuck in a funk after a breakup? I feel like this right now on top of a pandemic. I'm really sorry to hear that. Breakups are never fun. And especially in a pandemic and having to quarantine and not being able to get get it, go out and get over a breakup like you normally would. But I think, I mean, it's been a really long time since I've had to go through this, but if, if I, I think it's always easier said than done, especially if I'm not in that situation, but just keep on focusing on yourself. Your self care, self care is really important and it's, it's your moment to be selfish. So, you know, do you know, read a book, watch movies, journal, try a new hobby, find a creative outlet. I've, I've found that creative outlets help in so many different ways. Did you speak or understand Italian when you met your husband? So I did understand a lot of it, having grown up with the language a little bit and also minoring in Italian as well. So yes, but not like flu fluently at all. Um, we actually, when we met, we spoke predominantly English and a little bit of Spanish because we met in Spain. And I tried to impress him with my little knowledge of Italian, but I, I wasn't at a conversational level by any means. And that's it. Thanks to all of you guys for asking questions. I do ask a lot of times on Instagram. So if you aren't following me yet, be sure to follow me at Sophie's Dot world and if you do have any questions that I didn't answer here and I haven't answered in my previous Q and A's I'll link the playlist down below for you guys to check the check that out then let me know down in the comments write your questions and I will kind of collect all of the ones that I haven't answered yet in my next Q and A so thanks again so much for clicking on this video I hope you enjoyed it and if you aren't subscribed already don't forget to hit that red button down below that way you don't miss out on any of my future videos Thanks so much. I love you guys. You're my people. And until next time, ciao. So casually keep diving into concrete. So bittersweet. Huh? Keep losing sleep while driving.